record one. Hey, 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 this is uh, Wednesday. It is hump day. It is fully fresh Wednesday. It is what it is today. We are going over all the sports picks that I went over, you know, yesterday. I'm going to pick those guys. I'm going to tell you why I, you know, ended up failing most of them. Again, it didn't work in my favor. Uh, there's other things that I wanted to get over and done with right now. Uh, it is Woman Crush Wednesday, so my Woman Crush of Wednesday is none other than the beautiful, gorgeous Jordan Jones. So, and I'm going to go over the mental health aspect of everything, you know, as, you know, I'm starting to peak, I'm starting to get more and more, um, uh, happier and happier and happier as, you know, time goes. So, I'm not, I'm not going to, like, sit here and deny the fact that I was suffering pretty bad there for a while. But I'm starting to pick it up, starting to get better, starting to do what I'm supposed to do now. And, yeah, well, that's a good thing. Oop. There we go. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, so much for that microfiber freaking towel. Um, anyways. I was going to say, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's that time of the year, people, you know, you guys, there are people out there suffering from not just drugs and alcohol, you know, just mental state, you know, it's, it's that time of the year where some people are very, very lonely or just, you know, don't have family or friends around, it sucks, I understand, I don't even know if I took a bite, two vitamins today, so I better take some. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to sit and cry because that ain't going to do shit for me. Just on the simple aspect of not being a dumbass half the time. So when being dumbass, you do dumbass things. Um, I'm going to say, uh, most of my NHL predictions were way off yesterday, so I was wrong. So were my NBAs. But I am going to go over some. I'm going to pick some highly games that you probably should watch. Like, for one, Bruins Canucks. Definitely a watchable game uh, for the NHL sake, because that's probably going to be your most interesting and entertaining one just due to the fact that most they were the most impactful team that happened to the like they fired the GM, they fired the head coach, so I'd be really on top of watching that one. Uh, any of the other NHL stuff isn't really going to be that big of a deal. But, uh, yeah, that's like last night's games this in the NBA though that that would be you know the NBA I think tonight will be more interesting possibly cuz you got the Wizards versus the Pistons I'm taking the Wiz Hornets versus 76ers I'd probably take 76ers cuz they did beat the Hornets recently again the Bulls versus the Cavaliers I say the Bulls even though they were without De, uh DeMar DeRozan he is in he's in COVID nineteen protocol. This is what I've noticed. A lot of teams are going that route right now. Um, you know, a lot of players are ending up in there. That's one of those big big things. Uh, Knicks versus Pacers. I say Knicks. Bucks versus Heat. I'll say Bucks. Thunder versus Raptors. I'll say Raptors. Uh, Mavericks versus Grizz. I'll say the Grizz because they're just they're on such a hot streak. Timberwolves versus Jazz. I'll say Tim's, the Timbers. Uh, Nuggets versus Pelicans. I'll go Nuggets. Nets versus Rockets. Nets. Magic versus Kings. I'll say the Magic. Trailblazers Warriors is going to be a good game tonight too. So is the Celtics and the Clippers. I'd say Clippers on the Celtics, Warriors on the Trailblazers. So that is my picks for that. Uh, NHL, as I say, in the NHL right now, the most, probably the highly anticipated game tonight would be, it would be, the most interesting would be the Canucks and Bruins, 
from a point standpoint, like just from the standpoint of the Canucks wiping out the whole front office and getting rid of the head coach and that. So that would probably be the pick of my week, like game for tonight. Not just because I'm a Canuck fan. It's just Flyers and Devils don't do much for me. Avalanche Rangers, you, you, you kind of can see where that would go. And Golden Knights and Stars is not much different there. So that's my things. Yes, the pro wrestling landscape I is going to change drastically in the next coming... Uh, Well, I see calendar year because it is much, 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 much more uh, controversial because you got Johnny Gargano gone, you got Kyle o Kyler Kyle O'Reilly gone from the WWE. Uh, Johnny Good, yes, I see Johnny Good Grano. You got Sami Zayn coming up, and you got Kevin Owens coming up. You got, you know, other ones going to be heading out pretty soon here. So it, you never know. Maybe Jar Johnny Gargano stays with WWE. We just don't know yet. He does. He, you know, he's been pretty quiet about what he's going to do in the next few few months here. He is going to become a father, so I'm pretty sure he's he's already on his way to being that. And uh, that's good for him. I'm happy for him. Uh, like, congratulations on, you know, the new little rival that's coming towards you. Uh but the wrestling, pre uh, the pro wrestling uh, landscape is going to change pretty much in the next few months. Here, you're going to probably see a lot of these guys go to AEW, and that's just for the pure simple fact that AEW is where it's at. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say. on the front of it would be no Johnny's move to that uh, organization but you know he's got a lot of friends there and it's starting to peak up really where it wants to be and I'm cool with I'm cool with that in every aspect So, I'm not going to be totally uber afraid of anything of that, that going to change. That's not going to change me from watching WWE and all that. It's just, I feel that AEW offers a lot more to these people than WWE can right now. It's just, it's, they're... They're just not anywhere near or close to being back to where they're supposed to be, the WWE. The pro wrestling, is, like, it's, it is at a, pretty much a standstill. Just on the front of Ring of Honor closing down and um, for a while here. And several other, show, several other things going, you know, not so smoothly you still have what do you call it the you know ring of honor you still have the ring of honor out there or not ring of honor uh major league wrestling you got impact wrestling but it's you got gcw game changer wrestling is where a lot of guys are like i, I if he if <clears throat> for anything Kyle O'Reilly does not show up on AEW next year after, you know, in the new year, after the new year. And Johnny Gargano, I would sh solely base my money on them going to Game Changer Wrestling. Just for the hell of it, just because Game Changer Wrestling is something completely...
completely off the chain, completely different, is where it's supposed to be. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to jump back over to a little bit of the other sports aspects. You know, you got, like, a lot of people are talking about the playoffs for, like, NHL and NBA. I'm looking at it right now. It's still too effing early. Like, I was listening yesterday on the radio that they were talking about what teams are sellers, which teams are buyers. Well, here's here's your fun fact problem you got to hear. Teams that want to be buyers can't be buyers. Just for one pure simple fact, the cap is a hard situation to go against. Second, anything can tap in it has happened it has been proven that anything can change in a very quick and orderly fashion we saw it year a few years ago with the st louis blues i will use them all the time because that right there is a staple of saying you had a shitty first half of the season and then somehow you get a goalie who can steal your games left right and center in the second half all your players are starting to produce And that's kind of the way I look at, like, even with the NBA right now. Like, yeah, the Lakers are, you know, kind of suffering. And they're in the middle of some little, you know, situation where they're trying to, you know, they're starting to peak. They're starting to go. They're starting to move forward to where they're supposed to be. So anything can really happen in sports nowadays it anything can just switch in a momentum switch and one team can be better than the other with that being said when you're going to the nfl it's kind of like right now we're four weeks out from the end of the season going into the playoffs these next two i'll say the next two weeks because you got christmas break you know, I, I believe a lot of people are, you know, that's the Christmas thing. It's family, it's holidays, so, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a leeway to that. But these next two weeks are more critical in the NFL than the last two weeks because these next two weeks are going to really show people that there is a possibility that a team without a lot of star power could make the playoffs. I'm telling you right now, it's just that's the craziness of it. When I was going flipping back over to the NHL here, when I was hearing about the trade, trade deadline's not until about I believe March. Late February, early March, because we got the late Olympic break, and who knows if they're gonna be there at the Olympics. I don't know. That's still up in the uh air there. But, with that said, I love how they're starting to speculate now the trade deadline. You can't do that. Because, okay, yeah, there's certain teams. Probably Montreal, Ottawa, definitely Chicago uh, are really out of contention. But I didn't hear much of them saying anything on the Canuck front. And here, here's the funny thing. For the last three weeks prior to these firings, there was calls on Miller, Horvat, uh, Mott, and a few other guys. Yet, Boudreaux comes in, signs his two-year deal. He's the head coach. Now, I've been seeing some things. It looks like maybe Jimmy Rutherford or somebody else in the organization might get to be a GM there or whatever. There's a but to this. Teams have stopped calling because now they kind of notice that with, I will say, Boudreaux is one guy who can get you into the playoffs. He can turn your season around. He is a very smart guy. Yes, he runs high high octane offensive skills, but he can all, if anybody has ever watched how he coaches teams, he also plays a very strict and hard defense. He loves the forecheck. 
the thing is, he loves all these players because these players are very good. They're like they they are great. For what we have, from what we used we had, they're still great. They're still cal- high caliber offensive players. So believe me, they will do something when trade deadlines start coming up. Like I know the NBA. They don't really say much, too much on the NBA front of who's what, where's what, who's going to get traded, you know, who could possibly be on the move. Because again, you're still looking at an early, early schedule. With that also, on top of everything else, I don't know why everybody pushes so much towards the. Uh, forefront of a trade deadline day I would start pushing just like second week of January mid January beginning of February is when you really want to start looking at the trades teams that are possibly sellers and buyers because again you got the whole cap restraint flat cap kind of situation and which teams could part ways with, you know, rookies and prospects. And that's that's the biz. Like, that's the hardest part. When I look at games, like, when I watch them, especially yesterday, because I, I was on, on and off with the NXT because it's kind of like I was just waiting for Johnny Gargano stuff to come up. I was watching a lot. And, you know, it, the games, you know there's players on these rosters that don't want to be moved because they want to be the full, like part of the focal point of a rebuild or part of this team that's moving forward to this playoffs in the NHL or NBA. I fully understand why. Well, you get drafted to this team, you want to be part of this team and you don't feel like you because if you get trade you get drafted and then you get traded, it's like you got to start all over again. And that's part of the business, that's part of the sport. Landscape, you gotta restart all the time. But for the now, it has been me hump day, Women Crush Wednesday. Remember, Women Crush Wednesday. Give out your crushes, send them out on social media and that. Mine, Jordan Jones. Uh, I will be back for the throwdown Thursday because I'm throwing it down. I'm throwing down my picks, my predictions for the weekend in EPL, M- NFL, NBA. NHL, I'm going for it. I'm going all in. And then I'll be back on Friday with the Flash Forward Fantasy Football Picks. I will tell you who I am picking in my groups. And you will hear it. And I am on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Anywhere else you get your podcasts, I'm on those podcasts. You will check it out, hopefully. And I will talk to you guys all later. Because... It is Wednesday.